Ah, the Intergraph Interview 28HD96. A very exclusive Full HD CRT monitor manufactured between 1997 to 2000. It is more commonly known to be the preferred monitor of the famous programmer John Carmack, back when he worked at id Software between 1991 and 2014. In 1997, John Carmack acquired his monitor on which he developed Quake 2. At a price of $10,000, it was a very, very pricey monitor to get work done. The development of Doom 3 started in the late 2000s. When he was interviewed four years later, his intergraph can be seen on his desk in the back. In 2014, Carmack tweeted about his monitor, saying that even his Intergraph workstation at its software couldn't run Quake at 1080p, and that the SGI Infinite Reality Graphics System would only handle 1280 by 1024 pixels. The 28-inch CRT tube inside is a Panasonic S66LMQ110X01, an Invar Shadow Mask widescreen CRT capable of pushing resolutions up to 2048 by 1152 at 80 Hz. It weighs 100 pounds, which is 48 kilograms. The monitor measures 49.5 by 69.9 by 62 centimeters. Intergraph bundled their monitors with products like the ImageStation 2000 from ZI Imaging, as seen in this brochure from 2000s. These systems were aimed at professionals in the field of photogrammetry, which is an extraction of three-dimensional measurements from two-dimensional data like images. Intergraph also had a division aimed for government applications, like this awesome ruggerized LSDD-R workstation console, aimed for radar monitoring and navigation on ships or other command center applications like air traffic control. The LSTD-R console is ideal when conditions demand a ruggerized workstation for applications on land or sea. Now we know the history of Intergraph and the Interview 28HD96, we can take a look at the device itself. Let's take a look around the Intergraph. It's a um, very large CRT. 1080p from 1998, this, this one is, and uh, it's a very large shell with all kinds of, uh, of um, ports on the back, you have some BMC connectors, which you need a uh, vertical and horizontal sync stripper to, in order to get RGB on there, and a VGA. This port is used to, for, for debugging and updating with the serial but, uh, yes high voltage so uh, watch out <laughs> and this uh, model is uh, from 1998 <laughs> yeah it's a uh, it's it's been places anyway so the first thing you want to do to make the whole uh, disassembly convenient is lay, uh, lay the screen on its screen. And I just have a uh, IKEA leg table here with a, a foam which I uh, bought uh, or was uh, very coincidentally at a uh, thrift store. And I bought one and cut them uh, to size so it's uh, really convenient. So. Uh, Let's uh, let's do that. If you're going to disassemble at Intergraph, you're going to need a couple of things. I laid them uh, here for for your convenience. You need a screwdriver to remove the screws. A um, a mat to keep track of the uh, screws 
and the tray will do as well. This one in particular is magnetic, which means that these just see they just lay on the, on the ground and they can just be moved around and keep track of. And magnetic is really convenient because then they can't fling off when you put them on. You need a flathead screwdriver to discharge the CRT because uh, you never know what kind of a charge could be on there. But this CRT in particular has a um, discharge capacitor, so it's, uh, it's quite safe, but still, you never can be too sure. And in order to um, ground the, uh, the screwdriver, I just, just use some alligator clips and you know, data chain them together, then uh, connect them to a, well, I have a radiator over there, well, I connect them to there. So, uh, so now it's laying on the screen. We can take a look around. Well, take note that there are some handy uh, arrows pointing at the screws you need to remove to remove the shell. Interesting thing is, here are screws as well, but you don't need to remove them. This is all one piece. So you have uh, here one and there one. Nothing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, also there and there. And... Yes, here you have the uh, ports. Through the menu, you can select port A, which is uh, the uh, VGA, and port B is for the BNC connectors. And you can see here that you need a uh, horizontal and vertical sync. Anyway, so let's. Uh, Let's start removing these uh, these screws. When you're removing these screws, the uh, dark ones on the outside are the same format but there are three screws that are a different format it's like a, a smaller one and, but I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show this later on so like I mentioned there are different screws this one is for the plus for the big uh, the plastic in the outside you can see how uh, how rough the uh, screw uh, size is these are for the at the back of the ports. There are only two, and in the back and in the back in the middle of the bottom, it's only one. So see, there is different sizes. Keep track of that. Now, stage one: it's the outer cell, outer shell. So just keep them at. Let's put it here. And now that the screws are removed, you can just grab the shell and gently pull it up. As you can see, it's a quite large, very large shell. And now that the shell is removed, you can see all the shielding. And the shielding needs to come off, of course. I have here the uh, screws you need to remove. Some here, here. This is the tricky part. You need to see this uh, metal is clipped behind. It's actually riveted in a little bit, so it's really pretty tricky to remove. But just take your time, and eventually you'll you'll be able to remove it. In order to save you the hassle to remove these parts, you have to stick your thumb in here, press here, and there you go.
now that the uh, back shielding is removed you can have, have a, sh a first look inside you can see uh, the deflection uh, board with these coils and the neck board and the, the main uh, power board over there and this is where the uh, main uh, brains of the uh, CRT uh, resides and but now let's remove the uh, other shielding we have a couple of screws here we need to remove first in order to remove the shielding so let's do that What if you're removing one of these screws and then suddenly... Oh no! I can't get it out now! What are we going to do? Well... If you just grab some magnets and see if you can get it back. Is it here somewhere? Yeah, yeah, there it is. There you go. So you can get it out again. <laughs> Keep the uh, magnets around. Can be very handy sometimes. Well, let's um, discharge the CRT. Just get a um, flathead screwdriver and some alligator clips you can clip it uh, right here that will do and then you just connect the other clips yeah, that will be fine there you go I'm gonna just connect this to a uh, metal object I have a uh, radiator here. And the only thing you need to do is just slam it in there. Remove this. Get under there. Don't touch it. See if it. Uh, doing anything so we can actually remove the outer cap right now there you go discharged and safe now that the shielding is removed we can have a better look inside well everyone knows by now that this is the anode cap it goes to the flyback and the flyback is not a uh, normal model it's, uh, it's not something you can uh, re can buy an AliExpress or something and replace it. No, it's something specific. Anyway, yeah. let's see here. Oh, this is a uh, module by itself, the uh, input board. And this is the board that is uh, responsible for checking the system. Is everything okay? Especially these chips. It's uh, soldered on top of this board, so if something is wrong with that, you need to remove it completely. Or else you cannot work on it because it's very uh, inconveniently uh, you can't really work on it and the neck board it's uh, very well shielded it has uh, cap capacitors in there so uh, best to uh, have them checked there's uh, something uh, that needs to be uh, replaced and the uh, the yoke assembly it's pretty advanced you can remove this one to have better better look at it yeah. we have a uh, pop meters these ones as well be very careful with uh, with this because there uh, there is a chance that there's still like uh, you know charge on there it's directly connected so be careful so uh, let's remove um every part one by one and uh, after that is done we can 
like uh, take a closer look at individual parts and uh, look uh, further on there so let's begin with the um, the main uh, main CPU board which is responsible in handling the signals and uh, telling the modern monitor what to do to remove this uh, this board you have to remove two screws and it's very important that you don't uh, put it uh, on the base plate again the screen's weight don't have anything to hold off to this is this is necessary to, to remain the rigidity of the, the body because just like here there's nothing to withhold the weight of the CRT so if you would want to test the monitor like this you must have this one installed already or maybe just make a wooden uh, wooden plate you can screw it to have the rigidity and maybe uh, test this board separately somewhere else you know but this uh, this rigidity is very important Now that the screws are removed, you can slide the board towards you and pivot it outside so you can access the cables more easily. Just like this, you, know, you, you grab it, slide it towards you. Keep in mind that this card pivots on this point, keep it that way, you can see it hit there. Now you can slide it towards you and uh, remove all these cables. It is advised to make pictures before you do this, to keep track of everything. But before we're going to do that, I want to explain what what is. This is uh, one of the coils. These two are meant for the deflection, um, deflection coils, for the degauss. And as you can see, these are connected to the Deagles coil. And it doesn't really matter how you put these because it's just a, how you call it, it's just a alternating current when, when it happens, so it doesn't really matter how you put them back. This one is, of course, but just like all the things in this monitor, you can put them in wrongly, so there's it also has marks. Let me see. Just like this, you can see a notch here between the, po between, between the points. It's just the same as this. See, there's a point there, and it, uh, it's well made. It uh, shows you how to put it back uh, together, together properly. Anyway, this is a ribbon cable from a neck board, and you have more coils that it wants to be connected in there and uh, the main ribbon cable from the uh, power uh, this is where the data from the flyback comes in and uh, tells the uh, neck board how to uh, put in it uh, on the screen so uh, let's do that Now that the board is loose, we can uh, have a closer look and see what I meant about the uh, need to be take, care, um, take note of the pivot point here. When you're putting it back, you can see it's just slightly balancing on this part, but this ridge can get past the, the part and, and uh, hit the resistors over there. And and there are indeed some parts that you can already see, like that resistor there and uh, the uh, capacitor. And you need to be very careful not to uh, to uh, slide past it or like work on it or you know like press downwards. And you need to keep track of that.
This is the uh, board responsible for processing the video signals of the Intergraph. Here uh, is uh, things processed like you have the main voltage in here and it powers this board. It's coming in here. This is the deflection coils. This, uh, this is the main uh, processing board. This one uh, is the brains of the, uh, of the Intergraph. It's directly connected to the neck board. And um, if you have focusing issues or with uh, settings with your flyback, it is um, calculated in on this board. So if there's something wrong with the signal or the, the intergraph not turning on, like it's uh, for example, that was with uh, with the other board. But anyway, for example, when you turn it on and then it turns uh, on standby immediately, that means it cannot process the, the the signals properly, and there's probably something wrong on on this board because there, there's two ribbon cables coming in. One is from the um, mains uh, board where the flyback is located. And this one goes to the neck board. So it's, a, it's a, uh, the central nervous system of the intergraph. Uh, let's uh, put this board aside and uh, let's continue this assembling. Just to keep uh, things in tight and needy need to put things together because you cannot you cannot remove the deflection coil anyway so just uh, clip them behind here for now and this uh, these other other coils as well just to keep things tight and neat for the uh, oversight uh, purposes just remove this uh, ribbon cable you can just like Slide it out. Yeah, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty tough sometimes. Maybe you think it, it could break, but uh, anyway, let's just put this aside. Let's continue. Now it's time to remove the input board. And it's pretty straightforward. You need to um, unclip these for uh, very interesting connectors, pretty uh, well made. You need to uh, remove the RGB cables from the uh, neck board. And this ribbon cable and two screws, you can lift it out. And now everything is removed, you can just lift it out. Because it's like connected here, so keep, keep mind of that. There you go. Just uh, let's uh, lay this aside as well. And just a small note, it's actually better to leave all these cables attached. Oh, let's remove this. Leave all these cables attached because they're like, yeah, all the way in and you can't remove them. so. Better just leave the assembly as is. We'll uh, look at the, the assembly later on. So um, yes, this will uh, will be removed as well. Anode cap will be uh, done later on. Well, it's time to remove the neck board. You can uh, unplug uh, uh, all those kind of things. It's uh, pretty uh, pretty handy, except one thing. The flyback is attached to the uh, cartridge over there. You need to, uh, to remove that, but I'll uh, show you how. So in order to remove the, the uh, neck board, you need to remove a screw to make it loose on the uh, neck, of course. Two screws here, you have to 
you can ignore the first one this one here you need to remove counterclockwise there you go now it's uh, loose now you can grab the whole assembly and you see it's loose you can wiggle it a little bit like in a uh, circular motion while sl slightly pulling it up there you go now you need to see if you can remove these so this is the underside of the uh, neck board I can see here the two cables from the flyback and it's attached and in order to remove the neck board you need to remove these uh, two cables. But there's a leader in here and if you shove a screwdriver in there, let's see if this works with one hand. See, it moves. Now, put it open these wires can be removed <laughs> there you go now it's loose so now these these uh, cables are loose we can start uh, disconnecting uh, these wires Grab it and uh, place it somewhere. Um, like there. And everything is uh, like uh, needy, and uh, we can uh, see uh, better what we're looking at. We can start removing the bottom plate so we can look at the power supply board more closely in detail. Before we can do that, there's still one cable connected to the Purity uh, rings. And, uh, there's also a board uh, there, so we need to remove remove that. Uh... Come on, hey! There you go. So now it's uh... yeah. Let's just put it here for our uh, cable management's sake. So yeah, so the assembly now is uh, the tube is with the two part and the. Uh, Main board is now all uh, loose. And to see if we can remove them, we, uh, make note that there are a um, couple of screws that needs to be removed before you can access the other side of the board and that sort of thing. So let's uh, let's do that. While these remove these screws are removed now, there are still some on the back. We need to remove two of them. Mind you that those screws are different than the ones you just removed. See? These were the ones that were in there and these, the other ones, were the ones that were in the middle. Before you can remove the whole unit, the whole the bottom plate, you need to remove two, uh, no, three cables. This one, with the clip on the back side, you need to push that in. And you can remove this. And this one also with the clip, you need to press here, and then you can remove it. And you have one over here. Let's see, this one is the controls on the front of the monitor, I think. Hey, come on now. There you go. And now that everything is removed, you can grab the old back plate and lift it up. Ah yes, of course, don't forget to unclip these. There you go. short note these um, did not 
got anything applied on them. They're, they're just dry, no dialectic grease or anything. Well, when assembling, I would advise you to do so just to be in case. Dialectic uh, grease like uh, like this stuff, super uh, super loop. Dialectic and vacuum grease. So I guess that that will do nicely for this. Well, at this point, I'm not going to continue disassembling it because it's a self. Uh, well, it's a, it's a rare tube, and uh, not going to uh, to get it out or anything because that's just too uh, too risky for me, and don't have really the means to do it uh, safely. Anyway, if you want to remove the tube, you have uh, these um, screws over here. See, over there. If you have to loose, you can uh, remove them. Uh, you know what you know what to do. Just uh, find the screws you need to remove, and uh, then you can lift it out. But I would advise you to get a big bucket and uh, put it uh, in there before you like uh, get it loose, or maybe a very tall bucket that you already set it in and you lay on your back, and then remove uh, these uh, these screws. These uh, these cables uh, are um, for the main switch. This is the loop. Uh, main loop from the uh, main board to the uh, this board <laughs> and this is the cable for the um, for the buttons on the front so yeah you successfully uh, uh, disassembled the uh, integral so This is the uh, sticker of the um, CRT, if you're interested. And now we, uh, we, we came uh, to a point that we can look at the boards individually and how to uh, disassemble them to go further in detail on them. So this is the uh, neck board. I'm going to disassem disassemble this neck board. To, uh, so we can uh, take a closer look at the capacitors, for example. Well, you can see here, no screws, it needs to be removed. For our convenience, let us just uh, remove this uh, little uh, clip here. And lay it aside. Now you have your uh, the soldering iron. Let's see if we can pry this open now. Just with a little bit of pressure here, a little bit of pressure there. If it's right, it will come loosey goosey. There you go. And that's it. Small spot. Anyway, so now we have a good look at our uh, the board. So let's just uh, put this aside. Let's see, the next step is to remove this side. And there is a couple of transistors attached to a heatsink which is attached to the side. But uh, keep in mind that there is uh, cooling paste uh, used here so you can get uh, dirty fingers with that. Watch out. Let's remove these. of it falling off because the cooling paste as you can see is um, 
keeping it uh, in the place. See, there is the uh, a lot of capacitors here. So maybe if the image is a little wonky or uh, the uh, signals are not uh, processed properly, it is more on this side or on the. Uh, let's see, I have it here. Or on this uh, this uh, signal board because also here in inside there are couple of uh, capacitors underneath the ceiling. We will look at that as well. Anyway, so this is the um, neck board. It's a sophisticated beast. Yeah, so that is that. Be mindful that these um, grounding clips can uh, break very easily. I'll mention that later on on a different part. This is a closer, closer look at the IC chip in here. Custom IC chip. VP35, what is it? Focus. 3528. Interesting one, but look at all the pins on the back. That's a lot of pins. Maybe it's a resistor array? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. So that is that. Let's move on to uh, another piece of, uh, of the Intergrab. solder this uh, part again so, uh, with the new solder it heats up more easily and there you go so there you go wonderful it should look something like this Let's uh, finish it up with uh, uh, putting back the remaining screws and the uh, cable clip. Well, good job. Now let's put this aside and look at the other module. This is this, the uh, input board. This is where you uh, attach the um, RGB cables for horizontal and vertical sync. This is uh, for debugging, more debugging stuff. This is one where it connects to the flyback. Uh, is, that, is that true what I said? Yeah, that's, uh, this one connects to the um, main uh, board. This uh, ribbon cable goes to the neck board. This is the RGB cables going to the ne neck board. Now let's try to dis dis uh, disassemble this. Make note that there are five points you need to desolder in order to remove the shield. And I would advise you to use a desoldering wig 
like this one. Mine is uh, without uh, salt and flux on it, so I need to apply that myself. So while my uh, desoldering or my solder station is uh, warming up, we can uh, have a bit of a more closer look at the board. There's the RGB uh, points and the ribbon cable connection. And these are some, some ICs on the back, but also capacitors. And that's what we're going to take a look at. It's also important with this disassembled to ignore the work. To make note that there are um, capacitors. Yes, you can't see them, but uh, underneath you can clearly see some capacitors in there. Just like there, I can see. Yeah. So that's what we're going to take a look at. My, my desoldering station is ready, so let's see if we can uh, desolder this. Like I said, I also learn as I go. <laughs> yeah, so we need to desolder some other stuff as well because these are attached and these need to be removed. But let's, let's do this first. So now the, the, uh, my desoldering gun is uh, on, on temp uh, at temperature. Let's grab it and uh, try to remove the solder of these BNC connectors. Finally. So as you can see, there's a lot more capacitors, uh, capacitors here. So yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's put it all together, together again. I resolded these. And I'm now going to um, attach the shield uh, shielding.
Now that this um, board is uh, reassembled again, I clean it a little bit with um, the back side with the contact um, OPM contact cleaner. Yeah, it's, uh, it's excellent to remove uh, residue flux and all those kinds of things. So let's move on to do uh, another module. Now this is the signal processing board. This is where the main coils are getting fired and uh, de degaussing. Oh, you can see that. Degaussing is happening here and uh, all kinds of coils on the CRT is being uh, controlled from here. Um, this is the main uh, signal processing uh, unit with a big Panasonic uh, chip on here. We also have a ribbon cable uh, attached in here. This is straight from the um, neck board. And you have one coming from, mains, uh, from, from the main board where the flyback is. So in, in order to, to work on this board, you need to remove the back. There are different kinds of screws. There are two types. It's one a big one over here. Can you see that? Yeah. Big one over here for the grounding, and the ones that attaches the uh, sides to uh, to the plate on the back. So let's uh, let's remove this the uh, back side. Mind you, these uh, these are grounding clips. It can break off very easily. It happened with another board of mine. So keep keep uh, keep an eye on those. Just be uh, careful. And this one is uh, difficult to remove because it's really down there. And uh, it's, uh, let's see. I hope it's magnetic. Yeah, there you go. Before you can continue, grab this. you have these heat sinks. If you notice, there are actually screws on the back you need to remove, four of them. And also keep note that these heat sinks have, uh, you can see it already, um, cooling paste on them. Well, I removed uh, mine because uh, when assembling again, I'm going to apply it again. Anyway. When you're going to work on this board regularly, you need to remove this uh, just for testing purposes, or the cooling paste, I mean. So yeah, let's uh, let's remove that and we'll continue from there. And now, when you have this removed, you need to lift up this side first. There you go. Now you can just pick it up and remove it. Well, let's uh, look on the back. But well, mind you, this is a large board. And if you, uh, for example, have this board removed because you're working on it, the, the uh, well, as you can see, it's pretty bendy. So, as you can see like this, I'll push it on the other side to lift it up. See, so be mindful of that. In this case, this board is in pretty good shape, so I don't worry much, much about it. Well, what you see here is the other side of the board. And you have uh, the connectors for the video processing board. And this is the connector for, that goes to the flyback board. So yeah, that is that. And now you can uh, work on it and uh, replace whatever you need to replace. So that's uh, 
put it back together and uh, reapply the, uh, the thermal paste and uh, screw it all back together. First you need to uh, clean the surface of course with uh, some uh, isopropyl alcohol. That will do. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now you have the solder paste, or uh, solder paste, I mean the cooling paste applied. And you clean the surface with uh, some alcohol. You can lay in the board. First you need to do is laying it in on the left side and let it drop. <laughs> Not literally, of course, but it drop in here. Gravity do the rest. There you go. Now you can attach the screws that were in there, or uh, insert the screws that were in there. Turn it uh, counterclockwise until it clicks once, so you know it's in the groove, and then to the right to attach it. Okay. And this one the same, counterclockwise, and press a little bit until it clicks, and then to the right. And if you turn to the right and you still feel resistance, do it again. But, uh, it goes into the groove properly and not uh, ruining th the thread. There you go. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks good. Now you do the same with the other one. So. Doesn't have to be perfect because, as you can see, the heat sinks are a lot. So, we'll do. you need to put it with the text uh, on uh, printing upwards. So, Let it line up with the, the grooves. The gravity like sinking a little bit. Take it back if it aligns properly. Yeah. So if you cannot move it again, it's in the right position. How does it actually spread? Let's see. Pretty interested in this. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. Attach the uh, grounding uh, screws. Mm. 
So, and that's that. Now let's move on to the next module. So, as you can see, fly pack with the focus and brightness uh, cables, grounding uh, cable. So, this is actually where the uh, main voltage is, where it also comes in and where it's uh, rectified into uh, um, DC. Let's have a closer look. This is where the, uh, everything comes in. It gets rectified. Rectifiers are over there. Two of them. One. Yes, in order to remove these, you need to remove these grounding screws. They have one, they have one. Remove there, there, there. So let's uh, let's do that. Just a little side note here. Uh, on this uh, flyback transformer, there's a little PCB here. Tried to remove it, but I clipped it off. I didn't really know how to move it. But there's a a um, PCB with the same uh, you know connections. You can actually pull this off if I'm correct. There you go. Now you can remove this. Look what we have here. So yeah, look at this thing. What flyback has a PCB? Let's see if we can remove this. So align with the grooves and then you can pull it down. There you go. There's also a very large board with the uh, flyback over here, the connections to the um, flex cable that goes to the um, video processing board. Here you have the connector for the uh, signal uh, input board, uh, mains voltage. Let's see if that's correct what I'm saying here. Yes. <laughs> so now you can work on this board. And now let's uh, screw it all back together. And I guess that were all the was all the all the modules. Now we can put the uh, monitor back together. So just like before, 
going to grab this assembly put uh, this one in first so now it's time to attach the screws again so there's one here and one here and uh, one here and two on the bottom so uh, let's do that remember that these longer ones need to be for the two uh, let's see right here and right there so keep that in mind Now that the bottom plate is mounted, we can attach the uh, the cables back to the PCB. Go. So now the bottom plate is uh, attached and the cables are connected, we can attach the neck board. But before you can do that, you need to attach the corresponding cables. And I have the neck board here. We need to attach the flyback cables first, and then some other ones need to be attached in here before you can like turn it around and attach it on the neck. So let's do that. So grab the neck board and put it in a particular place so you can like leave it there. A little bit finicky though. It's not like this, yes. You can just leave it there. Need to move this lever here. Need to pull it up like that Press it. And that's it. Now it's attached. Now let's do the other cables. Let's see. So it doesn't really matter how you put them uh, put them in, but this is more like. Uh, let's see. The first one. You grab one from the degaussing coil, or no? It's a uh, it's a grounding uh, grounding wire from this. Uh, here. It's attached over there. You can see. We attached it to the other one. Now I grab the red one. I'm going to attach it to the on the left. 
So now these are attached. You can grab the whole neck board assembly and put it on the neck. Just gently wiggle it a little bit and pulling it down very softly, slowly but surely. So now let's attach the uh, already tighten the screw on the neck. Uh, just the same as uh, how it was because it's marked so just do the same and uh, you'll be fine now let's attach the cables to the uh, power supply board so we have a grounding cable here this goes to these into the signal board Difficult to do this at the same time. So. Let's keep things uh, neat and tidy. Let's uh, attach the signal board to the back. So these uh, cables need to attach and need two screws. So uh, let's do that. Now, the only thing you need to do for the signal board is uh, connect the uh, right corresponding cables. and connect this ribbon cable. Now it's time to insert the ribbon cable that goes from the deflection board here to the uh, processing board which we are going to install next. Which is this cable. Uh, let's see with the most, the, the sharpest turn. Yes, this one. You need to put it like this, yes. Like this. First you could get it nicely to the left corner and then in the right, so it's lined up and you press it down there you go now it's attached so 
this cable is ready to be installed in the next board. So now it's time to install the processing board, the video processing board with the uh, daughter board. We'll have it right here. We're going to uh, put it in there and uh, connect all the uh, right uh, cables in the right spots. So let's do that. Now you have this cable. There is a um, the openings, and the other one is narrow, narrower than, than the other ones. The most narrow spot has to be pointing to the back. So turn it around. Then you have on the back this board four pins, which this one attached to. It's difficult to see, but eventually, if you take your time, you can find them. Now. Press it in and there it goes. Now with everything attached we still have the cable of the main, main power supply which is... Where is it? Here it is. Now let's attach it. Now with that board neatly attached, with all the cables on the right spot, everything is uh, neat. We can uh, screw it down. And like I said before, this uh, this piece is very important to put it upright again, or else the weight of the CRT, you know, it's nothing holding it back, just like this spot, it's nothing. So it only bends, is bad. So uh, let us uh, screw it in. And now it's time to attach the anode cap to the anode point. But as you can see, there's no grease, nothing. So that's what we're going to apply. I have here dielectric grease which is uh, used to prevent arcing and uh, static electricity and uh, it's uh, future uh, well more future reliable and it's better to do so so and it also um, minimizes uh, humming and uh, high voltage uh, arc you know static electricity so that's uh, what we're going to do it's always uh, always best to uh, check that on your TV if it's uh, has that I don't know why this one was actually dry but anyway we're going to do it uh, just in case it's always a good thing just grab some little alcohol looks about right hmm <laughs> anyway Now that the dielectric grease is applied and everything is nice and, and, and uh, connected again, we can uh, try fire, firing her up. So let's uh, turn her uh, back up and uh, give her some power and see if she lives. <laughs> Use the handles. Well, let's see. And there you go. 
Let's test some uh, some video footage on the screen. Now I have uh, the uh, my, my computer uh, connected, so let's see if uh, it's uh, receiving 1080p. Yeah. Spend it. Yeah, it looks nice as well. Pretty good. Let's, uh, let's give a little tour about this. Uh, the things you can s put in settings here. If you press one, you get your. Uh, your contrast, brightness, decals, recall, it this resets uh, the settings. Horizontal position, horizontal size, vertical position, vertical size, uh, um, vertical punctuation, trapezoid, parallelogram, rotation, color temperature, display frequency, you can check it right here. Like a two is enter. One is uh, back. One, two. It's like moving through the um, through the menu. Input select. You can select uh, through the um, VGA or um, BNC. No. Oh, wrong one. Anyway, there we are again. Yeah, I skipped these two because I don't really uh, get them. But anyway, you can select the language. It's a language you can select. So yeah, that's it. That's a menu. <laughs> that the Intergraph is working again. We can put it on the screens again and uh, put the uh, backside on it again. And uh, the sh first shielding and then the back shell and uh, Touch the last uh, screws and uh, you're, you're done. And now it's time to grab the shielding and uh, put it on. Now with the uh, shield attached, we can now uh, attach the last part, or the second last part, which is the back, uh, back shielding. <laughs> there you go. A thing you need to do first. See, you have to hear the uh, the ports need to be on the uh, others on the back side. Here you have these grooves, and these grooves need to be put in here first. There you go. Now you need to be able to let it go down. But you need to be sure that these little flaps go inside. It's a little bit difficult though. Watch out that you don't cut yourself. I'm going to use a spatula for that. Let's see where I left that. Put in the groove first, and then stick it in here, let it, and then guide it in. There you go. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's 
four, and five. Come on. There you go. Now everything goes right. You can move, move it a little bit. Let's go in. There you go. There you go. Now let's see if you can move these back so the screws holes um, align. And you can grab the other uh, screws for that. The remaining screws. So now that this uh, all is attached, we can uh, grab the back shell and uh, grab the last screws and uh, screw it all back together. And again, just to be sure, these black ones are for the outer side and that one and that one are these smaller ones and the larger lighter one is meant for that one. So keep that in mind when you screw it uh, together. And there you go, you have now successfully uh, disassembled and reassembled the Intergraph. And just to be sure, let's check if everything works. There you go.